I swear to God, if this isn't working now, I'm not uploading at all. Hey, hey, and welcome to this video. My name is Nina and in today's video we have something very very special and fun to do because we are actually going to be touring the final version of this island. This is my finished enchanted woodland island and I'm so so excited to finally share it with you guys. Um, just quick disclaimer, if it sounds like I am reading off a script or something, I am not. I have just already recorded this voiceover two times and I also couldn't use the audio that I recorded while I was actually filming because OBS hates me. So if it sounds like I'm reading off a script or something, I'm not. I've just already shown you around the entire island for an hour three times. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Let's just hop right into it. Or oh, actually, before we do, I have two quick things that I wanted to share with you. First, I wanted to thank you so, so, so much for being so supportive and welcoming during the first stream that we did last Thursday. And it was just a very warm, cozy, fun little stream, even though we did have some tech issues, but I already fixed my Streamlabs so that Robo Nina shall never return. <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to thank all of you for showing up. There were so many people there and it was very overwhelming for me, but I am very excited to see where this journey takes us. And then that actually brings me to my second announcement kind of that I have to make because we are actually going to be streaming again this Thursday at 6 p.m. CEST, <laughs> which is German time. And we are actually going to be touring your guys' dream addresses. So if you would like to submit your island's dream address for a stream tour on Thursday, all you need to do is join our little Discord, which is brand new. It will be linked down below. And there's a channel on the Discord where you can submit your island with a quick description and an image so that we can choose a couple and then look at and enjoy all your guys's creative masterpieces. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very excited to explore and tour all of your guys's islands. And this is actually all there is to say before we hop into the tour. So let me actually hop into the tour and let's fly over and zoom over to the entrance where we will start this tour. Alrighty, so here we are at the airport. This is still the same airport because it's still the same island as the last iteration of this island because we only flattened and didn't restart since the last autumnal island that we did. So this is also still the same flag because obviously the name of the island didn't change and I feel like it still represents it very well and also fits the color scheme of this current island. But before we actually jump into the tour, let me show you the final map of the island. So this is actually the final version of the map of this iteration of props, which I really like. I really like how it turned out, even though I didn't pay too much attention to the map, to be honest, but I have risen almost everything to the first level of cliffs, which I really like, so that we have a bunch of sunken areas, which I really love. And if you would like to tour around with me, you can do that because as you can see, there's the dream address at the bottom of the screen, which I will have updated by the time that you are watching this. And there will also be a custom map that I always draw for my islands up on my Instagram so that if you would like to tour around with me or after you watch this video, that you will actually be able to find your way around a little bit better and you know which ways to go and which areas to check out. I will also leave a link to my Instagram down below. And for my set of villages, obviously we have my two residents, which are still obviously myself, Nina. And then we also have Pippin. And then for the final set of villages, I have Daisy, Walker, Kelly, Olive, Wade, who's my absolute favorite and he is never going to leave. <laughs> Marshall, Diana, Aurora, Punchy and Fang and I love all of them daily or actually most of them because we do have some beef with some of them <laughs> but we will just go right past that and just say that all of them are adorable and I also really love the color scheme of them. So the initial thought that I had for this island 
was that you would kind of step through the fence of your backyard and then enter an enchanted fairy woodland kind of that has been completely overtaken by nature and that was the main inspiration for this island so let's actually step through the fence and enter the fairy woodlands <laughs> and before we walk in let me actually open my camera app and pan all the way up and zoom out a little bit so that you can see all the little details that I threw in here because there is quite a lot to see. So we have the little fairy house and the nuptial bell up there and then you also get a glimpse of the main color scheme of the island which are blues and purples and there's also a bunch of yellow but later on we will also see some more colorful areas such as like orange and pink and also some more green which I really enjoyed playing around with color on this island. So yeah, let's let's run run along and enjoy and explore this island. <laughs> So if you're entering this island, you are crossing this little bridge and we also have the little canyon going all the way back there that you can only look into and not walk through. And then if we go up this incline, you notice that all of my island is basically a huge transition area. So there are many, many foresty and overgrown whimsical little walkways because I felt like that was just, well, the essence of fairy woodlands there wouldn't be like too many huge areas that are inhabited but yeah if we hop and take this little hop skip and a jump we can overlook the little museum which we still kept in a tent and um it kind of i feel like it just fits this island a lot better than a huge structure would and I just enjoyed having the little tent from my last island so much I couldn't bring myself to upgrading it. But we might do that for the next one. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> and we could also now continue on over to the right side, but we're actually going to go back and hop over to the left here. And we could also now go straight and through this little walkway and hop over the little river here. But we're actually going to go down and to the left here where we can have a little fairy picnic. So this is kind of a little tea party, also farm to table area because we do have the beekeeper's hive back there and some peaches around. So you can just come here with your little fairy friends and enjoy some treats of your liking. <laughs> and because I'm a little dummy and I gave you my ladder for the dream tours and placed this one here to indicate that you could go down here, we're actually going to need to pick it up and place it back down in a second <laughs> to actually go down here and check out the beaches to the left here because they are completely inaccessible without any ladder or anything else. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and as you can see the kind of very picnic tea party vibe just continues on over down here and if we now run along here we just have some very basic decor let me actually grab my little flower basket <laughs> and we're entering wade's little area so for my favorite little boy and he's a lazy boy i decided to do a little cuddle area slash kind of sleepover reading nook because i felt like this was exactly what he would like and this is also the same spot as for the last island version of this island. <laughs> and because I felt like I wanted to challenge myself by making something completely different in the same spot, but still having, but still. And now if we go back here, we can enjoy the view of the cascading waterfalls, which was actually the second speed build of this island that I uploaded to this channel. And you could also go over to the right here or if you had a vaulting port, which you don't have because I didn't leave one. <laughs> um, or you could climb down if you come from the entrance and actually check out the tiny little beach to the right there, which only has Pippin's little tent and that hasn't changed at all. So we will just roll back over, over the futon here and check out the little pier. So for the pier, I just did some very flat and basic decorations. So I just threw down a bunch of blankets and used some toy items and some food items because those are the two things that I kind of associate with Wade. Yeah, this just felt very cozy to me and I also really love the duck and I love the bread coat. So I placed the duck on the 
the bread coat, which I felt like was very cute. And it looked like Wei just dropped and forgot the bread there that he decided to feed the duck with. And now let's actually just run all the way back and behind the little tea party that we have here. And now we are actually coming across this little piano setup. So this is very, very simple. And it basically only acts as a backdrop to the area that lies above it, which I will show you in a second. You kind of already saw it now, but yeah. <laughs> And then this little rocking horse area just is the exact same thing and I only put it there for aesthetic purposes and to act as a backdrop for what lies above it. And back here we have some very very basic idea, I know that. We have a laundry beach rock and most of my beach rocks are I think actually all of them except for this one are completely blank because this is a natural and I didn't know what to put there but since this is behind Kelly's yard I decided to go with a little laundry area and I really love how it turned out and I kind of threw that together super super quickly so I'm super proud of myself for actually being quick with the design for once. <laughs> So yeah, let's just climb up this little cliff again and place back the ladder that I just stole a second ago and also the bush. Now, if we leave the picnic spot and we walk through this little forest, we can hop over the little river and get to this little Cosmo shower bath, which I really, really love. And you can now see what the piano setup acts as a, as a backdrop for. So I felt like this was a very classy little area, even though it is super overgrown. So I felt like the piano would go very well. And now if we go back here, we actually have a tiny little campsite with a futon sleeping bag. And this is just right behind the museum. And we also have a little campfire back there just for all the little camping needs that you might have. <laughs> and if we come up this little incline, we get to the fairy lookout or the forest lookout, whatever you would like to call it. I really love how this looks completed because we did add on to the surrounding areas over time. So we are only now getting the final finished view and I love how it looks, especially during this time of day with all the little lights and the lights in the dollhouses specifically. I just feel like it just looks so, so magical and I love, love it so much. <laughs> And now we could actually go to the right and check out the rest of it, but we're actually gonna go to the left here and see what lies here, which is actually perfect because we are greeted by Kelly, who is the keeper of this little animal sanctuary or wildlife sanctuary, whatever you would like to call it. I just imagine this little stable that I did in the same exact way as the camper van trend that has been super big on Instagram and everywhere, I feel like, in the community. And I just imagine Kelly taking care of all the little animals that might need some nurturing. So I just also put some rocking horses and sheep and some ducks and and this is also why I chose to put down some rocking horses to the left and down on the beach there. And then we also have this tiny, tiny little um, beekeeper's hive slash apiary area. And then if we go back here, we have a little duck pond because we all know how much I love my little decoy ducks. And I had to have a little duck pond or like another little duck pond because I feel like I have so many ducks on this and it's insane. It's ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> But yeah, if we come down this incline, this is where Kelly lives. So initially this was supposed to be a kind of Alice in Wonderland inspired picnic or tea party or dinner table setup, whatever you'd like to call it. But since there's just very little space, I decided to go with this little mushroom table setup, which I really love. And I love how mismatched it feels, but still very cohesive. And it goes with our little mushroom forest that we have to the right, where all the fairy houses are placed that we just saw from the little lookout that we were at. And back here, we just have a tiny little pumpkin patch for her to just harvest some pumpkins and take care of herself with some food items and then we have this tiny little picnic spot where she can just come and munch on some of the pumpkins that she just harvested and also enjoy some berliners and now let's actually walk back and all the way through the little forest that we have here And yeah, as we come down this little incline, we have another choice to make because this island is so goddamn full of little nooks. So I feel like it's very easy to navigate, but still easy to get lost in. I don't know how to explain it. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, if we go back down here, um, this is another view of the little fairy village that we've seen earlier. And then we also have this cute little double bridge moment, which I adore so much. Even though the upper bridge is completely inaccessible, it's only there because it looks cute. <laughs> but I feel like it is very, very pretty. And I just had to take a quick screenshot there, sorry. <laughs> I just love how that looks. And we're actually not gonna cross that little bridge and hello, Aurora, and walk all the way back here. And I'm actually gonna go quite quickly through here because you can also access this area through another path which was actually from the museum so if we would have gone to the right earlier we would have ended up on this little path so we have some more pumpkins and some more ducks because obviously i don't know anything about item variety and variation in my design <laughs> I just throw pumpkins everywhere and I'm good to go. But honestly, they are so cute. So who can blame me, you know? <laughs> and now if we would go off to the right there, this would actually lead us back to the plaza, but we're not gonna check that out now. We're actually gonna go down here and check out this little altar kind of thingy <laughs> that we saw from down below at the entrance. So I wouldn't say it's an altar or a chapel or anything, but I just imagine this to be a magical spot where the fairies would come to kind of restore their power or pray to their fairy god or goddess, you know, just fairy things. <laughs> and now if you go back here, we actually get another view of the area that I just ran through. <laughs> So we have this cute little mush forest slash fairy village, which I really love. It's kind of like a floating fairy village. So all of them live up in the trees and only one is down by the tiny little pond. And then you can also have a little picnic here with some bread and some pumpkins. And I love, still, still love the trio of the little bread coat with the wrapped up little gift and the brown fabric on the ground, which just looks like you just unwrapped some of the bread to have some lunch after a long walk on this island. I don't know. <laughs> and now if you would come down here, this is where Walker lives, who is another one of our cute little lazy boys. I love my lazy boys. They are so, so cute and they are my favorite villager type. So this is actually quite a tiny yard, but still I wanted to include some items that he would enjoy. So he just got some food items, some bread coat again, because I love it so much. And then just some cozy little details and an alarm clock because I feel like he needs it and now we could actually go off to the right here but we are going to go to check out the campsite because we do have a visitor today which is amazing and we love it so yeah I'm not going to talk too much about the decor that I did because it is super simple as you can see and I will show you what lies behind the campsite in just a bit because it is a very magical place but first let's check out who this is yeah, but we're not gonna take her, so, um, bye-bye, Plucky. <laughs> and now if we're leaving the tent, we are actually able to cross this little land bridge. And I love this land bridge so much because I wanted to incorporate one of them onto my island, but I didn't have that much space. And there's also a speed build of most of the areas up on my channel. I just wanted to say that. If you are interested in any of the builds that you are seeing during this island tour, it's very, very likely that they are either in a speed build or a let's play. So I will link both of the playlists for those things down in the description box below. But if we are actually crossing this bridge, we get to Marshall's little house, which we don't have a speed build on this channel and initially my plan for this little yard was to give him a raindrop farm but since this wasn't enough space for my initial plans and there aren't too many raindrop themed items <laughs> this is basically just a very water themed farm villager yard type of thing and i still really love how this turned out even though it wasn't following my initial idea but um yeah and then up there he just has a little silo and a tiny little farm area which i really love and if we would cross this bridge we would be back at the stunken fairy village but since we have already checked that out and we are walking around in circles on my island <laughs> We're actually going to run all the way back here and we're going to cross this bridge instead, which will lead us to a very different color scheme, actually. 
and this is where I decided to place my Able Sisters. So for Able Sisters, I was actually quite struggling to come up with a little color scheme that would fit Abel's and the island and I just feel like this island allowed me to experiment with color a lot more than I usually do so I really enjoyed it and I love this color palette and I did not expect me to because who would have known that orange purple and pink looked this good together if I can pat my back like that but yeah, if we would come down here, this is actually a tiny little lavender farm because I was trading for blue flowers so much while I was finishing up this island and I actually kind of overdid it. So I had way too many purple and blue hyacinths and, um, and I love the little pops of orange throughout. I just feel like it looks so, so cute and yeah, I w again, I would not have expected that. And now down here we actually have three ways to go so we could either go up we could go to the right or we could go down and we're actually going to go down first so this is where fang lives and this is one of the builds that i have done off camera because i wanted to try out some things and try some more flatter designs because usually my designs are really littered in trees <laughs> To give them height but for this one I wanted to try a little more of a flatter approach and I feel like it looks very very cute and I am probably going to try that more often on my next island and down here we just have a tiny little nook again where you can just sit and play the ukulele or read some books have some peaches And now we're actually going to go up and up this incline and we enter a little lookout. And this first part of the lookout actually has a little tea party again because we all know how much I love myself a good table setup. And this is also very whimsical and very, very cluttered, but I love how it looks. And then back here we get a view of the fairy castle over the sunken lake and I adore this view so much especially during this time of day i feel like the blue like the little turquoise cold blue goes so so well and does so much for this view and i love how this turned out and this castle is actually completely abandoned and inaccessible so there's no way that you can check out what's inside because honestly there's not much inside and I have kind of taken down half of it as I was finishing up this island because I needed more items <laughs> and so that's not that interesting anyways but what we can actually check out is what lies behind this pipe that I have so so graciously placed behind this tree and is absolutely not well hidden but we move <laughs> And this is actually the only way that you can get into this little statue garden enchanted thing. <laughs> and this is just to orient you right next to the campsite and behind Able Sisters. And if we are now going to go down this incline and cross this bridge, this is actually one of my favorite parts of this island. This is the Star Shrine. So I imagine the fairies to come here to restore their magic. And thank you so much, Balloon, for photobombing so, so conveniently. I mean, at least it's blue, you know? At least going with the color scheme. But yeah, this is the Star Shrine. And I just love the huge novelite in the back and the star fragments around and the little star wand that is placed on the Zen cushion. I just feel like the fairies would really treasure this little part of the island and that this is kind of the heart of all their magic so they are trying to protect this place so that they and all the nature and the animals around it can keep living and thriving off of the magic that that kind of fuels this island if that makes sense <laughs> and then up here we just have this rose garden and i know that this statue garden only has two statues but that doesn't come to my island because I didn't upgrade my museum and I still had these two from my last island and I just love how they look so I had to throw them here and I felt like they fit this vibe of this place very very well and then we just have a tiny little writing nook for all the fairies to come and write down the tales of their experiences on this island <laughs> and now let's actually check out what is left for us to see so if we walk all the way back down here and down the incline, we actually have the option to hop onto this pane. 
of a stepping stone because this floating island you you have to squeeze a lot and I know that it's a pain but you will just have to deal with it or you can't check out Aurora's yard which is right here and it's part of the little coastal fairy neighborhood that we will check out in just a second but I just decided to give her some very cutesy little homey items where she can just do her laundry and have some cozy little cushions and just read a book you know all the things that you would find in a very tiny village so yeah that's actually it for all rovers yet and now we have to trace our steps a little bit and go all the way back to the plaza where we will continue this tour So now we're actually back at the plaza, still with KK playing up for us. Thank you, my darling. You're doing so, so great. <laughs> and now to the right, this is actually where I decided to put the presents. So if you are coming to tour this island and dream of it, I left you a little bit of an outfit, maybe. And also some little gifts that I hope may bring a smile to your face so definitely check them out if you decide to dream of this island and for the actual design around resident services i decided to place it in this little valley and create a enchanted forest around it so it looks like nature kind of just enclosed resident services and it was there before but i just really love how this turned out and i am not hating resident services on this island as much and oh who am i to forget to place an item on an empty spot. Also, I love how I just act surprised. <laughs> we move. <laughs> so we will actually move through the trees here and cross this little bridge, which will lead us to our little street market. And this is actually the build that we did during our first stream last Thursday. And this was suggested to me by one of you guys. And I loved this idea so we just went with it and we just created a bunch of little stalls so first we have this tiny little board game testing area where you can test the toys that you would buy at this little plushie and toy store and i know there's not a custom design in the store but but if you know you know smarties <laughs> I actually left it. I told you I would leave it there. <laughs> and I did pick up all the shells, but they just keep on coming. So um, we move. <laughs> and then back here, we have a little pumpkin slash fruit store, which I love. And then we also have a tiny, tiny little honey store, which is where Olive would come to sell her honey. And we will see where she actually harvests it in just a minute. <laughs> And off to the right here, we also have a little fortune telling store, which I love so much. It was such a great idea. It was also recommended to me on stream. And then we also have a little flower store, which I also really adore. And for Nooks itself, I feel like it still looks kind of tucked away, even though it is beachfront. I don't know why. Um, but I really love the the view that you get of this area next to it which is actually what inspired me to place it here and decorate it this way and this is also why the color palette on this beach is kind of different and why we used orange as we did for nooks instead of purple as we did for the rest of the island and now if we would hop over this little stepping oh stepping stone and um, this is actually where i have my second river mouth and what i decided to do with it and over here we actually have olive's little beachside apiary so i am calling this olive's bees so i imagine her to own her own little small business and take care of her little bees which is also why this apiary is very bear themed and hello olive but yeah, Olive just has a tiny little um, table set up where she can just have some tea that maybe she sweetens with her honey, you know. And then I actually left the beach rock blank as I announced already. <laughs> And in between Olive's and Daisy's yard, which lies back here, um, we actually have this very, very cute little writing nook. Because as we know, 
Daisy and Olive are both some normal villagers and the normal villager type usually likes to write and read books so this is what we what we did with it and I really love how it turned out and then we have Daisy's little yard back here which again I really love love the overground vibes this was initially inspired to be a garden shed but it just turned out very overgrown and whimsical which I'm not mad about I love it <laughs> And then to the right here, we just have a little proposal, which I have never ever done on my island. And I just felt like it fit this beach so well. And I love how the swinging bench looks in front of the wedding arch. Excuse me, perfect combination unlocked. <laughs> And then back here, we just have Punchy's little yard. It's a tiny little yard with a cute little flower patch. And then he also has this little sleeping bag futon, which he loves to sleep on. And it's the cutest thing ever, even though, you know, we do also have some beef with him. But he's a cute little boy. And this is the final tour, so we will, we will make our peace with it. <laughs> and then we have this tiny little kid's tent, which I just adore so much. And it is part of our little school playground on this beach and part of the school up here so this is our little fairy school which is run by Diana who is the teacher of this island teaching all the little fairies all there is to know about using their magic for the good and healing animals and and plants and stuff like that I imagine <laughs> and if we would now go back here we just have a tiny little sand castle and we are entering the last part of this tour and the island which I kept for last for a special reason because in front here we only have a very basic beach walkway with some star fragments and a tiny little B slash reading slash seating spot but on the peninsula we have the magic door which I said on stream and I said in the build we were actually going to decorate that on stream and it was recommended to me to decorate the area behind the door as a star fragment farm but since this is where the door would lead us and it is a very very tiny space I actually came up with a little bit of a different idea and yeah but back here we have a tiny little dream room like outdoor dream room and I put a little wedding arch behind a bed because I imagine that if you would step through the door which also lies behind a wedding arch you would wake up in this bed and you can see it vice versa you can see it either that you would wake up in this bed if you would step through the door and just enter dream world which is this island so it's kind of inception-y <laughs> Or you could see it as you are waking up in this bed, but you, like you're actually just dreaming. And if you wake up, you're back on the island. And this is basically just the room where the fairies dream to maybe again restore some magic. I don't know, do something magical. I just felt like this was a very cute spot. And yeah well that's actually it this was the last area on this island which means that this island tour and this island is actually finished i can't believe it myself and i can't believe that this is the last time that we will see this island up on this channel so um yeah thank you so so much for joining me on this journey and for helping me decorate this island it was such an amazing experience and i'm looking forward to create the next place with you guys so so much and again if you would like for me to tour your island on stream next thursday at 6 p.m cest join the discord and submit your island yeah i'm very excited to see your island and to see you for the next journey so thank you so 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 much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here. And yeah, take care of yourself. Until next time and bye-bye.